Okay, guys. Hey, how's everybody doing? Thank you and welcome to Travel Talk Tuesday on May the 4th, 2021. Uh, sorry for the delay earlier, but uh, tonight it looks like we're just doing this on, on Zoom um, because Facebook changed their protocols. And uh, so we were trying to uh, log on like we normally do and have it. So we have a little intimate meeting. I'll record this and put it on uh, YouTube and Facebook later on. But uh, gosh, we can have a whole lot of conversation one to one if you'd like to do that or group to group. Um, I had an opportunity yesterday to um, take a flight. And believe it or not, it was from Atlanta back to Jacksonville. So if I can pull up this video and just show you, because normally why would I video in an airport? But it's the first time I've gone anywhere uh, on a plane in almost uh, 18 months. So let me show you what I shot here real quickly. How about that? Hey, David McGuffin here. Atlanta's Hartsville Jackson Airport. First time in an airport in over 14, 15 months or so since, gosh, March 9th or so, 2020. I forgot all about clear, PSA pre-check and everything else, but I'm in. Very, very few people here. This is pretty cool to see uh, the walkway at Atlanta Airport between Concourse uh, A, A and B. It's decked out the rainforest under here. Each one of these walkways from terminal to terminal has a, a particular theme. So like from Terminal T to Terminal A, oh, wow. it was all kind of art from uh, statues from uh, Africa. And of course, this is the rainforest. Out of Atlanta? No, anywhere. Mm -hmm. England was the last places we went no, through Atlanta, no. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, through Atlanta, I don't know, but I mean, when was the last time we flew? Sky Club. We went to Christmas with him. Mm -hmm. Who I'll get when I'll get back to Jacksonville? Let's look around the Sky Club here. It's pretty crowded because there's a lot of delayed flights. But at least I'm here and flying. Mm -hmm. okay. back here all right I, so you know what's so great about that i got to fly for the first time in uh 14 months or so uh anyway it was great experience uh so tonight we're talking about the island of idra in greece um from athens let me get back to this um to my video here so you can see what's going on um so down here where this little heart is is the island of Idra, right down here. This is Athens, Greece. 
And you can get to Idra by driving here, going to where this heart is and taking a 30 minute ferry, little boat to the island right here. Or you can take a cruise from Athens on a hydrofoil boat that's about an hour and a half. Either way, it's a great experience. And uh, when, Charlotte and I, when Charlotte and I go yeah. uh, on vacation to Greece uh, without a group, uh, we uh, like to spend some time here. Uh, my, my tours that go through Greece uh, spend a couple of days or a day there, depending on which tour it is, because I think it's one of the, the best islands uh, to visit in Greece, because number one is traffic free. There's no cars, no vehicles. It's only boats, donkeys, carts, and feet. And uh, so we just love it. It has some wonderful beaches there, great seafood, great ambiance, but it's off the beaten track. And um, in normal years, a, a daily cruise boat comes in, brings tourists from Athens for two hours, and then they leave and go away to a few other islands. But uh, otherwise, it's just a kind of a laid back Greek island. So let me um, move on here and talk to you a little bit about it. So this is, I, this is uh, the harbor of Hydra or Hydra. And um, this is the north side of the island. So I've never hiked across the island to the other side and I don't even know what's over there. Some small little villages, but most everything's on this north side and it's connected by these paved or dirt paths from one little village and one beach to the other. And uh, this is looking back to uh, the town of Hydra and from one of the paved walkways or donkey paths or walking paths. This is an Ottoman style bridge that was built um, several centuries back in the 1700s by the Ottoman Turks who were in control of Greece for, gosh, almost uh, three, 400 years. Uh, another of the harbor here in Idra. So while this is ringing real quickly, this is the main square on the harbor in Idra, and you can see all along here are probably about six or eight different outdoor restaurants. And every dining experience in Greece is outdoors, whether you're in the big capital city of Athens or on the seaside. And uh, you might can see just some wires coming across, but as the sun comes up and it uh, gets midday or afternoon, they, all the Greeks are sailors, so they've made sails basically a canvas sails that go across and shade the restaurant. And uh, so as you can eat there in comfort anytime, it's very arid uh, climate. You can mm -hmm. see by the background where up on the top of the hills and everything else, there is very little vegetation, but it's not humid like, gosh, I'm in Florida today. I don't know what, it probably got to 90, but the humidity was about 92, 90 as well. And uh, so it's, but it's, it's never so humid in, in any of the islands or anywhere on Greece that we go to. So even if you're, you know, you're there with hundred degree temperatures, it's still not unpleasant. So it's there's a breeze and everything else. So this is the main square in Idra. And I mentioned to you the mode of transportation is by foot or by donkey. And you can see this is donkey even has a handicap insignia on it and it can park anywhere. And uh, so people that are infirmed in some way or another uh, climb up on it and ride up the hills. But I can tell you what, I've seen a lot of elderly Greek men and women walking with canes and whatnot and they, they don't ride those donkeys up there. They're just climbing up the steps to the top of their village, to the top of their house in the village. So you definitely uh, have the Mediterranean diet and stay pretty slender and uh, pretty fit because of all the walking you do. But there's donkeys everywhere. 
when you arrive, you can uh, suitcases, you put your suitcase on it. This is uh, toilet paper and water going probably to a hotel. There I am. I just got on there to get a photo, pay the guy five euro. <laughs> I didn't ride the thing anywhere. There's a lady taking her groceries for the week back home. That bell rings every hour, like almost every bell tower in Europe. So you never know, you never don't know what time it is. You can see the restaurants there with the sails over them. Hi, I'm David McGuffin, and I'm in Greece on the island of Hydra, that's spelled H-Y-D-R-A. We're taking a little walk out the coastal path to the west. What you see behind me is uh, looking from where we've come uh, to the, to the uh, east, looking toward the town of Hydra. I'm referencing a movie here I've never seen. The distance was constructed brand new in 1957 as a prop for the movie featuring Sophie Loren called uh, Boy on a Dolphin. Anybody know that movie? Hmm. <laughs> this is that Ottoman Turk bridge. And this little beach is about a 20 minute walk away from the harbor in Idra. Well, we've reached our destination here and just in time. This is Lycos Beach. Looks very inviting. Let's go take a dip. Like I mentioned, yeah. like I mentioned last week as we were talking about Scopolos Island and uh, uh, well, especially Scopolos, but in Santorini as well. You can rent those umbrellas and chairs for the entire day for like five euro. You've got the beach. There's a, a restaurant and bar nearby. So you can, uh, people will bring you drinks, uh, water, uh, and you can walk up to the restaurant and have fresh, fresh food, Greek salad, seafood, fresh fish, um, spaghetti with uh, clams and mussels and that kind of stuff. But uh, it's, it's right there and such a great experience. The sunsets are so vivid. Now, the next topic I want to talk to you about is dining, because um, like I mentioned before, all the dining is outdoors. If you're on the harbor, you see those restaurants that I showed you earlier that are on the harbor that are uh, al fresco or outdoor dining, and they cover up with sails in the uh, afternoon when the sun comes out. But many of the restaurants are back up a ways in town and are covered with trees or grapevines or whatever. And uh, this is how you eat. So in this era of COVID-19 and the pandemic, uh, the Greeks have never had so much of a problem with, uh, you know, setting up for outdoor dining. As a matter of fact, uh, the government just yesterday on the 3rd opened up all, uh, all of the restaurants for indoor and outdoor dining all over Greece. 
and um, the report today was everything went well. This past Sunday or this whole past weekend uh, was the Greek Orthodox Easter, celebrating the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's on the not the Gregorian calendar, which is what we use in most of Western Europeans, but on the Julian calendar, the old Julian calendar. So some years, that's why it's separated from our Easter by three or four weeks. But uh, they're very, very important ceremonies that go on and to celebrate uh, Christ's resurrection on uh, two days ago on Sunday. And then yesterday was Easter Monday, another holiday, which was the first time in Greece for uh, about five or six months that uh, all the restaurants opened up. So this is a typical Greek restaurant outdoor. Uh, some pasta, orzo, and I think that's lamb. Uh, this is uh, elements of a Greek salad. I think I showed some of you that have been watching the last few weeks, but honks of feta cheese, olive oil, and uh, then we have uh, peppers, red onions, tomatoes, of course, cucumbers, and uh, just a great uh, al fresco dining experience. And one Greek salad that sells for like five euro will serve three people for sure. Seafood is very prevalent on anywhere in Greece, uh, but you also, this is a, a pasta with uh, clams and mussels it looks like, and then whole fish as well are uh, a common everyday occurrence. Again, back of the harbor in the bells. So the next little video series uh, is a celebration that occur occurs in mid-June around the 21st of June every year. And it celebrates a, an, an admiral um, in the Navy, the Greek Navy, that was born in, on the island of Idra. And he was uh, instrumental in defeating the Ottoman Turk uh, invasion. So the Turks, uh, which is their, their capital was just across the, the sea there in what we know as uh, Constantinople or Istanbul now. And they were, uh, they occupied the country of Greece or the people of Greece from the Renaissance, 1453 until 1821. So almost 400 years. And this, uh, this admiral, his name was uh, Mia Olis, uh, he was uh, stormed a uh, Ottoman Turk boat, set it on fire and sunk it and defeated it and was instrumental to uh, having Greece become independent in uh, 1823, I believe is when it was. So this is a festival that only occurs on Idra. And uh, Charlotte and I happened to be there this last night culmination of the festival where they have fireworks. But in this video, you'll also see in the harbor, a ship set on fire, uh, which is supposed to emulate and uh, recall the uh, battle that this Admiral won and gained Greeks, Greece's independence. So the ship in the bottom left corner right now, I think that's a pretty good fireworks show. And it went on for 20 or 30 minutes and it was pre preceded by concerts and aeration and, and all of this um, celebration all in Greek. So it was Greek to me uh, and I didn't, but I got the gist of it because I looked it up ahead of time of what the celebration was all about. So let me come back full screen here and talk to you just for a minute or two about uh, some really exciting news that uh, 
It looks like, as I've mentioned the last couple of weeks, that we actually have a, a couple of tours assembled to go to Greece. And today I published a really, really abbreviated schedule of uh, some tours that are going to happen because this week all of Europe's opened up. It looks like, according to President Biden's um, news conference today, that, uh, gosh, we're going to reach herd immunity or 70 percent of us uh, vaccinated and uh, COVID free by the middle of June, July, I guess. And uh, so the, the EU and Greece are open up their borders for tourism. And they just like us are probably sick and tired of uh, not uh, making any income, restaurants being closed, uh, museums being closed, and they're interested in Europe just as we are as life getting back to as close to normal as possible but safe and secure as well. So, gosh, over a year ago, I had a, a, a tour schedule for 21, 2021 posted that had, I don't know, probably 25 or 30 different tour departures for all of my tours. But today I whittled all that down to, I think about seven of them. And uh, there's a couple of, there's a tour to Greece, a tour to uh, Italy, the Villa Italy, a tour to Scotland and Wales, a uh, Taste of Ireland tour, and the Best of the Med tour, I think, are the ones. And then the two Christmas market tours, which are Eastern Europe and Christmas markets of Germany and Austria. So I put all those out, and I feel pretty confident that uh, those are going to go. Uh, I'm very confident that even the tours next month in June, June 23rd or so, are going to go. And I have a, uh, a couple of student groups even preceding that, leaving on the 14th of June to go to Greece. And everything is lining up to be you know, perfectly great. So if you're interested in travel, check those out. And I'd love to have you join me. I know some of you right now looking and watching tonight are already signed up for the Greece tour or the tours later on in the year. And so we'd love to have you do that, but you can see that it's a very abbreviated schedule from, from what Charlotte and I usually do. And uh, I'm at a point where I'm not gonna be hiring out local or hiring out guides in Europe to be doing anything. So these tours, I'm gonna be on them myself or Charlotte and I both will lead them together just to kind of get back in the swing of things. It's been kind of crazy the last few days trying to get everything together. We, um, we have a, a tour catalog that we that's online, available online, that lists all of our tours that we do. And over half of these, we're not even doing these tours, but uh, they're packed up in boxes in our storage unit because we had them ready to go for travel shows uh, back in 2020, in the spring of 2020. But we also have this little uh, book we send to everybody that travels with us called a tour planner. And one of the item, very first items in that tour planner is uh, to uh, get out your passport and check that. So here's my passport. By the way, my money bet, I'll show you that in a minute. But my passport got a whole lot of stamps in it. It hadn't got any stamps since uh, December of 2019, but it's still valid through 2022. I'm looking forward to getting the page stamped um, next month in Greece. Uh, when I fly into Athens and into Italy. So Charlotte and I have already booked our flights. We're ready to go and do that. Uh, we have a tour with our, I wouldn't call it a tour, a vacation with uh, our family, our son and his uh, wife, Lori, Brian and Lori, their girls and uh, Lori's parents. So we're going to Italy in the middle of July and just kind of relax and show them around a little bit because we have never done that with them. And uh, I've got, like I say, come home for a while and then go back and, and hopefully Ireland will be open and everything else. So uh, when I travel, I travel with a money belt here and I actually wear the money belt underneath my clothes. You can't see this, but I put it underneath either my shirt or into my pants. But in that I keep my credit cards, my passport, um, my Euro cash, and anything that's really important. And it's, it's just with me the entire time and I feel like it's my safe. Like my, my safe here at home is locked up with a combination. So if someone wants to get into my money belt, my safe, 
I have to rip my pants off basically to get it. So I've never had that happen. So uh, that's uh, that's what uh, that's what I travel with. So it's, it's it's great to be thinking about getting on a plane and going back to Europe. So uh, I'm I'm excited, and some great things are happening here. I've got one little uh, one little last closing um, segment here with Charlotte and I and swimming on the island of Idra, and uh, then I'll close it out. We can even have a few little comments if you want to. Cause like I say, it's all here with us on, uh, okay. on the Zoom. David and Charlotte McGuffin from our uh, getaway in Greece on the island of Hydra. We've had a great time having a little vacation here. Gotta go back to work, ha ha, in Rome in a couple of days, but this has been fantastic. We've had a lot of Greek salad, a lot of fish, and a lot of time in the sun and the water. Have a great time. So, from the island of Idra. <laughs> okay. From the island of Idra, your adventure starts here with David McGuffin's Explorer Idra.